and I am one of them, have witnessed the Palestinian tragedy, a tragedy of people who are constant immigrants from their homeland with a gloomy present and a certain future. Looking back at the past, we Arabs remember how strong we were. Our armies went east until they reached China and west until they reached the border of France. The courts of Khalifas swam with astronomers, astronomers, physicians, and alchemists, in addition to poets, to poets, linguistics, and architects. In the 10th century, there were psychology, uh, psychiatric hospitals in the Arab cities like Damascus and Aleppo, when at the same time, uh, the Western world considered patients who are psychologically ill as accursed people. From this comparison, I guess, it's logical for the Arab to suffer from a severe case of nostalgia for the past. Historical drama used to provide them with a mean of escapism from their uh, frustrating reality that is filled with a lot of hardship, into their past when they were the greatest nation ever. Especially that any, especially that any down-to-earth Arab has learned the, the lesson, the harsh lesson by now, that the world is ruled neither humanly nor justly, but by sheer power. However, all the pro progress that the Arab nation has accomplished in the field of science has started to retreat, and since then we have been we have been living in an age of darkness with clouds are still hovering over our heads till today. Meanwhile, the European civilization started to flourish, looking at us, the Arab, with, the, with what Edward Said describes as imperialistic content, and denying us our important participation in building a human civilization and our great role of enlightenment when Europe was up to, it, to its ears in ignorance and anti-scientific theology. The West insists on viewing us as stereotypes of Bedouin warriors who know nothing about civilization whatsoever. It, it is as if great Arab cities like Damascus, Seville, Grenada, and Baghdad, which were equivalent to cities like today's New York, Paris, and London, never existed, or as if uh, thousands of manuscripts upon which our civilization, our contemporary civilization is built, are not our uh, actual legacy. In other words, the, the West media only recognized us, as, uh, recognized in us the empty half of the glass. In a view of all of, of the above, Arab have no means defense, uh, of defense except clinging to their history, not all of it but particularly the situations, characters, and victories, optimizing their past glory and hopefully their future renaissance. They were striving for self-esteem. They, they have lost in order to reclaim that uh, lost uh, self-esteem for decade, the Arab schools, uh, the Arab schools when it comes to history taught students almost nothing about the bright images of the past, uh, almost not nothing but the bright images of the past. Other images of failure, closed and nihilistic ideological phenomenon and struggle over the power which devour, devoured everything, including the Islamic empire itself, were almost completely ignored. Thus, what has happened in the school books has been carried out on the historical television drama. As a result, we have turned our rich and variable history, which is full, uh, which is full of conflicts, events, battles, and ideology, ideologies into what Denise, the famous poet, describes as a myth. It is as if our history has been serialized until it has, been, it has become unbelievably pure, which makes difficult to, uh, to us to analyze, criticize, and assess. History, along with its heroes, has become sacred, and this sacredness has become the only criterion according to which any historical te television drama, the script writers, 
credibility has been measured to. To prove his true sense of belonging, as well as, as satisfying his audience, the scriptwriter has followed the same policy followed by the school books, namely replacing critical reading of history with emotional and purging ones. Has been watching characters never commit mistakes. The scriptwriter has always portrayed them as the incarnation of purity, truth, courage, honesty, and self-sacrifice. As a result, watching this drama, these dramas, the everyday man has thought that is uh, that he is watching the real and mere truth of the real history, and anything else intentionally distorted to malicious, maliciously deg uh, degrade him as an Arab and Muslim. In other words, we, the Arabs, have committed the same mistakes done by the West, but in the other way around. We, as we regard nothing from, the, uh, from ourselves except the full half of the class. That being said nowadays, the question which keep coming up into the mind of contemporary Arab intellectuals, thinkers, writers, and artists are, is it possible for a nation's true renaissance to be based upon half-truth? Is it possible for a nation that does not see clearly into the history to draw its course towards a bright future? And, we, and are we always going to be in that constant state of self-defense, utilizing our history as a means of a propaganda against the lies spread by the Western media, with its superficial understanding of our past and present? These problem, problem, problematic questions keep echoing into the mind of Arab artists who are very much concerned with finding answers, answers to them. These answers tend, tend to come out as creative works such as novels, television, drama. Lucky for me, I was among those who worked in historical television drama which claim to have served that purpose. They are Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, when we see in Salah al-Din Ayyubi, and that's a very important point, we have done this series about uh, no, eight years ago now. Uh, no, about no, nine years ago. And while we were filming this series, the 11th of September happened. And suddenly we found ourselves surrounded by so many television stations coming from Europe asking us why we are doing this series about the Crucified War. Because as you remember, the, the first uh, announcement by George Bush, the President George Bush, is about, he, he actually uh, 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 recalled the Crucified War. And they asked us why we are doing that. And we said we, we have started shooting actually before the event took place. And uh, we insisted in that series to clarify the point that it's, it's not a religious war. It's a war for, for land, for wealth, and for power. Everybody used his religion in this war. It's a war of, uh, it's a war of lords. They have the titles, but they don't have the land. And they came to our land to, to, to occupy it. And so many times, we find two armies fighting each other. Half of this army are Muslims and the other half are Christians. And on the other side, half of this uh, uh, army uh, uh, were Muslims and the other half are Christians. So it wasn't a matter of religion as, as much as it was the matter of occupying land and obtaining much power. 